Ravi, Prepare Like a Pro podcast. This week on the show, we have Cooper Murley. He is our Adelaide ambassador at Prepare Like a Pro. Cooper is one of the most recognised upcoming AFL players in the 2021 draft. A young man who loves his footy and is striving to reach the AFL, as it has been a personal dream ever since he was a young kid. He is also loves hanging out with his mates and girlfriend and loves watching sports like soccer, basketball and cricket. His local club is the Tea Tree Gully and his state league team, which he's been doing pre-season training at, is the Norwood Football Club in the Sample, Barracks for the Carlton Football Club. And before we start episode 39, the Prepare Like a Pro podcast mission is to empower aspiring athletes and staff with practical knowledge with some of the industry's most inspiring individuals and to strengthen the AFL community. If you like the show, please follow us on Instagram and show your support by subscribing to the podcast. We're on YouTube, iTunes and Spotify. Thanks for joining us, guys. I'm just going to send Cooper an invite. Cooper. There we go. Awesome. How you going, mate? Good, mate. How are you? Yeah, going well. Beautiful blue skies in the backdrop. Love it. Absolutely, mate. It's a cracking day here in Adelaide. Very nice. Thanks for joining us. We'll, uh, we'll dive straight Thanks for having me. We'll dive straight in, mate. Take us back to the very beginning. At, at what age did you start playing football? Um, yeah, so I started playing football probably around age age five to six. So, um, yeah, in, enrolled myself down at uh, Teacher Gully Football Club and uh, yeah, started there as a young tackle in under six um, and played my juniors uh, all the way and through to under 15. So I uh, ended up playing roughly about 140 games for Teacher Galley. Um, and then, yeah, was fortunate enough to be uh, selected uh, in the under 13, under 14 and under 15 uh, development squad programs that they run at Nord. Um, and then, yeah, obviously I progressed into the under 16 team um, and then uh, on the back end of that year, was lucky enough to get a bit of a um, bit of a taste at under 18 level, and then um, last year played in the under 18 um, premiership side at Nord, um, and then yeah, this year uh, fortunate enough to be um, out with the seniors at the moment. So um, yeah, it's pretty much my football and background as as to this point. Amazing, mate. Yeah, that's great progression uh, and, and good development program, obviously, from, from Norwood. So that's, that's a great thing to be involved in. Who, who have been some um, strong influences on your career to date? Um, oh, I've had many, many, you know, big influences, um, you know, obviously family-wise. Uh, Dad has been a massive influence um, on my football, um, you know, whether it's, whether it's the, you know, the quarter-time sprays or, yeah. Um, ch- chats after a game, but no, he's helped me, um, you know, pull my head in and keep me in line. Um, and yeah, you know, obviously his input along the way has been highly beneficial. But um, you know, as I've as I've progressed to an older level, I think he's, um, you know, he's more understanding of uh, the coaching base that I have now, and um, has probably stepped back a little bit more and let the coaches do their thing. Um, I think Jade Rawlings, uh, the senior coach at Nord this year, is. Um, been massively influential um, over the summer and, um, you know, helped me adapt into, you know, a new role that I'm, you know, not necessarily familiar with, which is a small forward role. And, um, yeah, no, he's been really, really massive. I think not only speaking on behalf of myself, but probably speaking on the, you know, the whole squad as a, as a, as a base. And, um, yeah, the thing, not only not only me, like I just said, but, you know, the, the impact and change he's been able to bring, um, to the parade this year is yeah massive, and so I think he's been um, highly influential over the summer. Fantastic, and um, yeah, twenty twenty obviously was a different year for everyone for for many reasons, but but certainly playing footy. Um, Absolutely. How did you cope with that year, mate? And what what were some lessons that you learned from the challenges? Um, yeah, I think obviously um, you know being an SA, I think we. Yeah, we had it pretty good, you know. Um, not not so much was impacted, I think, footy wise and um, you know, other sports, you know, compared to places like Victoria and um yeah, so I was actually fortunate enough to get a entire season of footy in and um yeah, obviously there was massive challenges along the way. I think when the first, you know, the whole COVID thing hit, um, you know, we had to we're limited to, you know, certain resources, you know, can't go to the gym. Um, and, you know, when we're in lockdown as well, you know, you can't just peel out to an oval and have a kick. So, 
Um, yeah, the beginning of it was quite difficult. I think it left a lot of us at home just, you know, scratching our heads, wondering if we actually get to play any footy at all. And, um, yeah, once restrictions started to ease a little bit, um, yeah, it certainly helped. You know, we were allowed to – I think the club provided a few resources, um, you know, uh, a few gym programs and stuff that we can do at home. And then, yeah, once, we, once you know, we were allowed out and, um, you know, could get to an oval, it was, it was certainly different. You know, it's, it makes it a lot easier when you're training in a team environment. You know, everyone's there to push each other. But, um, yeah, I think I struggled a little bit doing stuff by myself, um, you know, not having that, that team support to, you know, push it or push one another. So, um, yeah, it certainly had our challenges. And But I think, yeah, us more than anyone, we're really fortunate that, um, you know, the cold COVID uh, thing here shut down pretty quickly. So we were able to get back out in the park and start training in groups of 10. And, um, you know, once once they eased, we were allowed to get back together as a full team and um, start playing games, which is which is really, really good. And, um, yeah, like I said, we're really fortunate enough to get a full season under our belt, which was really, really good. Yeah, that's fantastic, mate. The, um, you mentioned the challenge of, of doing the training by yourself and being stuck yeah. at home. Um at times, like majority of the time as a footballer, you do have the external motivation of training with your peers, which is why exactly. a lot of people love it. Um, what, what, how did you motivate yourself for those that might be in rehab at the moment and doing a lot of training by themselves and they're out of the group? Maybe that they could benefit from, from ways that you um, motivate yourself to get the work done. I think, yeah, the, I think the main thing for me was, well, obviously, you know, I had school at the time, so I had something else to um, distract me a little bit, but, I think, yeah, you know, if you're striving, striving to play at the highest level, I think you just got to keep your eyes on the bigger picture. And, um, you know, I guess, I guess the whole COVID thing, you know, for some, for some probably would have been, you know, really, really hard. But I think others, you know, probably might have enjoyed that little bit of downtime and stuff with family. But, um, yeah, obviously, I think, yeah, what motivated me was just the bigger picture. I think, um, you know, if there's, there's, you know, I, you can teach yourself a lesson or two, um, you know, whether you, you can be a person who sits back and, you know, says it's too hard or you can be someone who just keeps keeps really striving to, you know, uh, reach that main goal. So I think for me it was just, yeah, really keeping my eyes on the bigger picture and, um, you know, once once the season, you know, came back, ensuring that I was um, in the best position I could be and um, was ready to kick on with games as well. So, um, yeah, I think that was the biggest thing for me. Fantastic. And then... You've had a successful uh, off-season, pre-season, um, putting on six kilos. What, what, was that a focus of yours in this off-season, pre-season, um, adding yeah, some strength? Absolutely. Um, yeah, obviously, I think I've, I've always been always been quite skinny and, you know, never been um, one of the bigger players out in the field. So, um, yeah, obviously, you know, being involved in a, in a senior pre-season this year, um, you know, size – Size was a, a big factor for me and um, was something that I really wanted to narrow my focus on. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, I've had, you know, a lot of help from yourself, uh, a lot of help from um, gym programs out at Nord as, and stuff like that as well. So, um, yeah, I've certainly had the resources and, um, you know, the right people around me to help me do so. And, um, yeah, obviously getting nutrition and stuff right. And, um, yeah, obviously not so much what I was eating not so much what I was eating, but I think it was just <clears throat> um, eating a lot more. So, um, yeah, obviously, you know, gym programs, eating a lot more as well has really, really helped me this off-season. So. Fantastic. And, and for those that aren't aware of um, what it takes to play at, at state league level and when your goal is, like you said, the big <clears> picture <throat> to get drafted this year, can you take us through what a typical week looks like starting from Monday going into, into the weekend? Yeah, so, um, yeah, it all depends on um, what day we played. So, um, last week we played on Good Friday, so uh, training was only Monday and Wednesday. Um, so, uh, Monday being a main session, um, and then Wednesday sort of being um, like a sort of captain's uh, run sort of thing. Um, however, this week looks a bit different. Uh, playing on Saturday around about midday, so we've got light skill session uh, tonight. Then tomorrow night we'll jump into a main session and then uh, Thursday will just be a little top-up session, um, you know, just a bit of team bonding stuff before the weekend. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll uh, kick into that. And, yeah, that's what a week looks like for me. And then what about, how do you fit in the gym? Is that before or after your, your skills? Um, yeah, so usually uh, skill session – oh, sorry, gym session will probably be uh, after. So 
Uh, for this week, because we're playing on a Saturday, uh, gym sessions will probably be after Tuesday session uh, and the Thursday session. So after we're done out in the Oval, um, Tuesday will probably be a bit heavier in the gym. Um, and then I think Thursday will probably just be more, um, you know, li- not not lifting so heavy and probably just working more on technique sort of stuff and uh, a bit of strength stuff as well. So, um, yeah, that's when we incorporate our gym stuff. Amazing, mate. Fantastic. And do you do your upper body and lower body days or, or do you do a total body sessions? Um, yeah, I think the ones we do, so the sessions we do at Norda, um, I think they're probably full body based. Um, but yeah, I do like to, in my own time, probably go and work on, um, you know, your stuff like your biceps, tries, back and um, all that sort of stuff. So try to fit that in uh, when I can. But yeah, a lot of the stuff we do out at Norda is um, a lot of just full body stuff. Yeah, fantastic. Awesome. And you, you've been able to keep up your speed, which you mentioned is one of your strengths. Um, was that a focus of yours in the off-season pre-season? I know you wanted to put on weight, but did you, did, did you put a lot of good energy into your, your conditioning side of things as well? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, yeah, I was speaking to some people, you know, putting you had to be really smart about the way that I was putting on weight because, um, you know, obviously I didn't want to put on weight and, you know, lose some of my endurance and speed, which... Um, I consider to be my weapons in football. So, um, yeah, obviously, you know, speaking with the right people and having the having some great resources around me um, allowed me to do so. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, obviously with your programs and um, the gym programs that we've got at Nord as well, um, like I said, full body stuff and, um, yeah, a lot of the conditioning and stuff we did during the summer was, um, yeah, pretty high intensity and uh, a lot of it. So, um yeah, I was pretty fortunate and obviously, yeah, like I mentioned, having good resources around me allowed me to put on muscle the right way and uh, also maintain my speed and endurance as well. Yeah, fantastic, mate. That's, it's a good point you make because you don't want to, you know, it's, you could also call it like functional mass. You want to put on that body armour, but, but maintaining yeah. your speed and your one wood as a player is so important. Absolutely. Um, so that's 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 a great point for, for developing footballers out there to not forget about your strengths. Um, when yeah, you're absolutely. It when you're focusing on um, building up your, your weaknesses. Um, you mentioned nutrition change and how you didn't change too much of what you were eating, but you just ate more. How did you go about that? Did you add a couple of snacks to it or did you just eat bigger portion sizes for those trying um, to put, put on weight and um, you've had a successful result with it? Um, yep. Yeah. What, what did you change there? Um, yeah, I think, yeah, like, like you just touched on, it's not, it wasn't so much what I was eating. I think it was, um, yeah, just trying to eat a lot more than what I was and, um, yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be massive portions. Um, so I think, yeah, I was eating, you know, a bit of chicken and rice at, say, 10 o'clock, um, obviously breakfast before that. Uh, so then, yes, yeah, that at 10 o'clock and then um, big lunch at uh, lunchtime and then uh, something small <clears throat> before training, um, you know, whether that was like a protein shake or um, just a few snacks or something like that. Um, and then, yeah, obviously maybe a protein shake after footy and then, yeah, home for dinner. So, um, yeah, not, nothing too much obviously changed. Yeah, like I wasn't, wasn't necessarily eating a lot of, a lot of bad stuff. I just really, really need to get what I was eating, just needed to get more of it. So, um, yeah, that was sort of the changes I made um, in terms of my diet. Yeah, fantastic, mate. Um, and what about um, the mental side of preparation? Are there things that you do during the week? during a game week that help you um, get your mindset right? Um, not so much. I think um, being involved in uh, the SA Talent Hub at the beginning of the year, we, um, yeah, we, we did a bit of mindfulness um, in them programs. And, um, yeah, I think I find they, that really, really helped me and, um, you know, helps. I think it <clears throat> helps you clear your head of any outside sort of distractions, um, you know, coming into a game if, if you know if you're a bit worried about anything else or you know your mind's somewhere else and not on the game um and you know you want to try something like mindfulness i think i've found that that really really helps um and yeah i think yeah come game day you're just ready to go out and play your role and do the best you can and um without any sort of outside distractions so i think um yeah that's something that I definitely want <clears throat> definitely want to do more of and um yeah incorporate more into my probably weekly preparation uh, coming up to a game Fantastic. And then what's some of your favourite ways to recover um, after a big main training session uh, and or game? 
Um, um, I think more so training, probably come home and um, have a bath with, or have a warm bath with some muscle salts and stuff like that. Um, that'd probably be more for training. But I think, yeah, on game day, we um, the next morning after a game, we, us as a Nord squad, all get together and, um, you know, whether that's going to the club and, um, you know, getting on the foam rollers, bands, stretching and whatnot. And um, after doing that, then we get onto the then uh, ice baths as well. So, um, yeah, it's either that at the club or um, we meet at a beach together in the morning, and, um, you know, just get into the water and just do some slow walkthrough sort of stuff. Fantastic. And um, you've mentioned Norwood have been a huge influence on your, on your career today and your development. Are there certain players that you've, uh, that you, you've kept your eye on during pre-season and, and watch how they go about it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, we've had uh, Paul Coppolo, uh three-time premiership player from Hawthorne, come back to Nord, um, which I think, yeah, it's been absolutely massive. Me playing a very similar role <clears throat> or position um, to Paul, I mean, he's been very, very influential. Um, you know, just I spoke to Dad the other day and we were just saying that, you know, that bloke made a living for himself playing as a small forward. So any bit of advice I've been able to get from him has, yeah, been absolutely massive. And, um, you know, other blokes like Richard Douglas as well, um, Mitch Grigg, just a, lo- a lot of blokes who have had a ton of AFL experience, which is, um, you know, to try and feed off of them in any way I can. Um and, yeah, just get any bit of advice that's going to help me going forward. And, um, yeah, so they're probably three players and, um, you know, highly experienced and, um, yeah, massively influential uh, over the summer as well. And do they approach you and give you advice or do you um, go up to them and, and sort of tap on the shoulder and ask them questions? And um, It's a little bit of both, I think. Um, you know, obviously when we, when we go into, you know, um, drills that are specified for, you know, forwards, mids and backs, um, yeah, I think, you know, Popolo has sometimes reached out to me and, um, you know, given me a little bit of advice. But, um, yeah, I'd say in terms of that, it's probably been a little bit of both. And, you know, whether it's directly to me or, you know, it's them pulling in the group as a whole and, um, you know, touching on, you know, what they want to speak about as a whole um, has been really, really good. So, um, yeah, it hasn't just been direct as well. It's been, you know, I've been able to learn of stuff that they've mentioned to the whole group as well. Fantastic. Awesome, mate. Well, thanks so much for jumping on. We'll, we'll wrap it up with the last question. Uh, what, are you, what are you excited about for 2021? What, what's on the horizon, mate, for you? What are you pumped about? Um, yeah, I think, yeah, obviously, you know, last year being able to play a full season, um, it was obviously shortened um, by a few rounds. But I think, yeah, this year, you know, I feel um, physically and, um, you know, mentally the best I ever have. So uh, really keen to, you know, <clears throat> jump on or jump into this season and, um, you know, obviously with the changes around the club and whatnot, um, yeah, this is it's a really, really good place to be at the moment. And, um, you know, given the group we've got, I'm really excited to see, um, you know, where we'll go this year. And, um, you know, obviously with some of the names and stuff we've got, um, yeah, I reckon we're, we're destined for big things as well. So, um, yeah, just really excited about getting on the track and getting a full season in and, um, you know, obviously it's a very exciting year as well. And, um, yeah, I just want to be able to maintain a really high standard of footy. And, um, you know, if I can hopefully give my contribution to the team in any way I can. And, um, yeah, hopefully we can get a big, bit of success at the end of the year. Fantastic, mate. Well, thanks for jumping on today and sharing your experience. And, and thanks for uh, being the South Australian uh, ambassador at Prepare Like a Pro as well, mate. It's great to have yeah, you on board. No worries. Thanks for having me. Awesome, Cooper. We'll speak soon, mate. All the best. No worries. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Make sure, if you enjoyed the episode, to join over 1,000 footballers by subscribing to our website, preparelikeapro.com. And if you um, are interested in our podcast, this will be launched on a Monday in a month's time. So you can download that or you can watch it on the IGTV on our Instagram and if you want to work with one of our coaches one on one you can direct message us on Instagram or email us at support at preparelikeapro.com we have AFL experience strength and conditioning coaches as well as online training programs uh, that are specific to your playing position thank you and we'll speak soon guys cheers